everyone, Sanyan here with the brand new Tech Ideas blog. And I decided to start this because with, you know, hundreds and thousands of new products and ideas coming out in the world today, I think it's really worth highlighting the ones that have the potential to change the world. And I think it's also kind of fun and entertaining, you know, highlighting the ones that are total and epic fails. So it's only very fitting that we have a mixture of both for our very first video. So this is going to be about a guy called Manoj Bhargava. Um, I've seen him in a documentary called Billions for Change. I highly recommend the documentary. Now this guy is a multi-billionaire who is essentially spending his time and his wealth in trying to come up with technological innovations that are going to basically pull the third world out of poverty. You know, uh, improve health outcomes, bring fresh water, and improve... Um, supply of abundant energy and to that end he's come up with some fantastic prototypes fantastic inventions and again i'll link the documentary i'll put it in an annotation i suggest you watch it but nonetheless this documentary starts off with an absolutely hilariously silly idea namely that we are going to put a real dent in the third world energy problems by making a human power bike so check this out so you try to look for that which is the one thing that will lead to benefits that are across hundreds of things. The human mechanical energy is so amazing, why can't we use that to create energy? So we've invented a hybrid bicycle that you pedal for an hour and you have electricity for 24 hours. We call it free electric. Human mechanical energy is so amazing why can't we use that to create energy? Hmm. Well, put simply because it's not so amazing. Last time we humans relied on human mechanical energy, we were living in caves and hunting animals with stone implements. For us to move out of those caves and, you know, start multiplying our population and have some kind of food security, we had to um, use animal mechanical energy, which is, you know, probably nine, ten times higher than human. And then for us to go away from, uh, you know, tilling the fields all day to a world where we have roads, cars, planes, internet, computers, we actually had to go from animal mechanical energy to fossil fuel energy, which is, again, hundreds of times more powerful. And so, quite simply, there isn't enough human mechanical energy in the world to power the modern world we have today. It's not a revolutionary idea. Now, let me elaborate. So let's give these guys the ultimate benefit of the doubt. Let's assume that this bike is 100% efficient at converting human mechanical energy to electrical energy. And let's also assume that the people riding this bike are exceedingly fit and strong people. Uh, you know, a cycling enthusiast that weighs around 75 kilos can put out 200 watts for an hour. Now, how much energy and how much power really is 200 watts for an hour? Well, 200 watt hours in India costs two cents um, to places that can get electricity. So, in effect, you know, you're making a guy or a lady or a kid work for less than two cents an hour. Now, also to consider, to make this two cents worth of electric power, you would need to eat, uh, well, to burn at least 700 calories, which, you know, in, in our Western terms is two Big Macs, or perhaps for the third world, an equivalent of 600 grams of rice, which I assume is going to cost more than two cents. So just makes me wonder, like, is it more worth it to just buy a car battery, go to a place that has power, charge the car battery, bring it home? That's probably going to cost you less effort and less energy than riding this bike. Still, let's hear some more. The free electric, I think, is the coolest of all our inventions. And yet it's going to affect, maybe have the largest effect of anything in the last 100 years. The reason is, for the poor half of the world, they have electricity 24-7. Electricity is the greatest enabler there is. You have this, you will never run out of electricity. And you never generate any pollution. Man, height is a powerful thing. You will never run out of electricity. Well, in translation, what he means is you will always have 
a functioning phone charger with a flashlight. What you and I consider electricity, like uh, heating in winter, cooling in summer, dishwashers, washing machines, microwaves, ovens, TVs, desktop computers, you won't be able to power any of those things. In fact, it would take three of those bikes to power my handheld blender. But let's watch this to the end with human energy and working out a lot of the efficiencies, we're able to go and power 1,050 equivalent watts of lighting and energy. So out. when when does this start to get to a point where it lights up everything? Well, actually, right about now. There, it is. there we go. Pedal for an hour and you can have lights, charge your phone and everything else throughout the night. This is the cheapest, most practical way of getting electricity throughout the world. Look, as we've shown, it's Expensive and impractical. But let's have a look at some very conventional technologies that can do the task much, much better than the human-powered bike generator. Okay, so first let's have a look at solar panels. They're between, you know, 15 and 45% efficient, and um, in most commercially available ones will be between 16 and 18. But the uh, conventional solar panels have been tested at 38.8% efficiency, and the ones with optics will go up to 45. In the future, they will definitely be more efficient than human beings, who peak at around 26% efficiency. Now, there's also the fact that um, you don't have to feed them or force them to ride bicycles. And a 250-watt solar panel, which costs around 170 US, produces an average of one kilowatt hour per day, which is the same as five cycling enthusiasts taking a turn on a 100% efficient bike generator for five hours and burning over 3,500 calories in the process. So, to summarize, um, $170 worth of solar panels does seemingly a much better job than one of these bikes, which makes me wonder how cheap these bikes would have to be to be viable. And then there's also the added factor that solar panels come generally with a 25-year warranty. Now with all the moving pots and the generator also in place, I wonder what kind of warranty would come with this bike. Finally, let's have a look at diesel generators. These are quite cheap. And a liter of diesel fuel in India costs about 50 rupees or 76 US cents, and it has around 8,700 calories, which is about enough food for four people. So, could you feed four people on 76 cents? Probably not. So, it, it's relatively cheap in, in terms of how much energy it has. Now, diesel generators are more efficient than human beings, um, which is very important and with 500 watt output which is basically like you know two to two and a half of these bikes um they cost as little as 80 uh, us dollars so again very traditional um do cause some pollution but still an infinitely better candidate to generate electricity than our bike here so in closing I do feel a little bit douchey for poking fun at Mr. Manoj Bhargava, who to me, at the end of the day, is an inspirational figure uh, to make billions of dollars you know, from scratch and then to go on investing it in, into technologies with the potential to pull billions of people out of poverty and then change the world. It, it's, it's an inspirational thing, and it, it inspired me to um, you know, try and thread a similar path in my life. But... We also have a fundamental disagreement when it comes to perspective on um, criticism. I, I think that, you know, technological development requires a rigorous competition between ideas and very honest feedback, critical feedback, which eliminates the bad ideas. And Mr. Bhargava tends to think that, you know, agitation or aggravation is the biggest cost of all um, business. Well... I do hope that, you know, I've delivered some honest feedback in a nice civil manner which will, you know, maybe perhaps prompt their team to focus on many of their more productive ideas. And, you know, after saying all this, I do intend to make another video uh, as soon as I can. I'm moving out of the house about 
some of the other projects that Mr. Bragava has started and you know they at least in theory seem world changing and fantastic and I'll have a look at that so subscribe to stay tuned for more videos on groundbreaking technologies and also silly ones take care y'all <laughs>